Hello, my name is John Wright. I'm a director at the intellectual property law firm Stern, Kessler, Goldstein and Fox. I'm going to talk today about settlement and termination in inter partes review proceedings. Unlike its re-examination predecessor, IPR proceedings may be terminated by joint motion where the parties reach a settlement agreement. The governing statutory provision is 35 U.S.C. Section 317, and the governing rule is 37 CFR Section 42.74. Over the past two years, the Board has encouraged early settlement and termination of IPR proceedings. There are five principles to consider when attempting to terminate an IPR in view of settlement. First, although the statutory provision governing settlement on its face applies only to instituted proceedings, the Board has also terminated cases prior to institution. When it does so, it nonetheless follows Rule 74 and requires submission of any settlement agreement. Second, the Board is not a party to the settlement. While it has to terminate a proceeding with respect to a petitioner, it may continue a proceeding as to the patent owner at its discretion. Third, since the board is not a party, the timing of a settlement and joint motion to terminate is crucial. The rule of thumb is the sooner the better. Parties have a good chance at full termination prior to completion of the substantive record. But once the petitioner has submitted its reply, then all bets are off. There is at least one case where the parties secured full termination on the eve of oral hearing. That case is IPR 2012, TAC 00033. But that's not the norm. For a case that the board continued against the patent owner, see IPR 2013, TAC 00016 and 00036. The fourth principle is that the board will always require submission of the full and unredacted settlement agreement and any collateral agreements even when the proceeding is in the pre-institution phase. But upon request, the board will treat the agreement as business confidential information and keep it separate from the file. Some parties have expressed concern that settlement agreements may be available to another government agency or upon a showing of good cause to a third party. While some uncertainty surrounds what would constitute good cause, in our view, the board wants to encourage settlement and will cautiously guard that standard. The fifth principle is that the board will consider the overall procedural posture of any case prior to termination. It invariably asks that the motion include the status of all related co-pending proceedings, including whether there are multiple defendants in any co-pending civil action or co-pending inter partes reviews that have motions to join. The more fully an agreement resolves the underlying dispute, the more likely it will lead to full termination. So with the number of total inter partes review cases approaching 2,000, there's never been a better time to seek termination in view of settlement. Thank you.